right, uh, where are we? Oh, wow, listen. Now there's a second power, okay? She has fourteen different other power, apart from manifesting body for different purposes. She has fourteen other powerful uh, ability. The first one is uh, the one who suffered distress can attain liberation by contemplating their sounds, their vibrations, the frequency of their vibrations. She can uplift them and cause them to be liberated. Wow! Second, since my knowledge and views have turned around and come back, meaning turned inward already, I can make it so that if living beings are caught in a wrecking fire, the fire will not burn them. If someone believes in her, in Kuan Yin Bodhisattva, and revere her all his life, and call in her for help, maybe with all sincerity in desperate situations, she'll help him. Third, since contemplation and listening have turned around and come back, back to the origin of the source, not the ear, but the inside, the hearing, true hearing faculty, true hearing ability. I can make it so that if living beings are floundering in deep water, the water cannot drown them. Yeah, I told you, I read somewhere, it is here also. Fire cannot burn, water cannot drown. Wow, such a power of a Kuan Yin method. But remember, Kuan Yin Bodhisattva cultivating <laughs> cow paths as sands of the Ganges River already. She became like an expert now in her mission, just like some specialized in this already. Not like we just practice a, a one life or something and then we can attain all that. It could be, could be. And maybe you practice cow bars as many as the Ganges River sand. Okay, fourth. Since false thinking is cut off, means she, she has no more false concept. Huh? Only pure, correct truth. Hmm? And my mind is without thoughts of killing or harming, ever. I can make it so that if living beings enter the territory of ghosts, the ghosts cannot harm them. Wow! Isn't that cool? There are territory of ghosts even, you know that? You didn't know, did you? No, you wouldn't see it either. Yes, you never see them. The thing is, we have territory of different category. Just like we human, in the physical world, we have the urban city, uh, crowded, with mostly similar kind of people who gather there because of their interests. You know, like government employees, mostly they like to live near the capital together so that they can work easily. And then uh, the one who serves the government employee also live around there. And the one who work, especially who are selling things, you know, for the government uh, officials and stuff like that, they also live around there. Yeah. And those who connect with those, <laughs> connect with this and that, they connect together, they live there. And we, I, you, you, I, connect with each other because Sura Gama Sutra, so we are here together tonight. And we connect with each other spiritually. So every weekend or something, you come here and see me. I don't live in the middle of the city. Different interests. Mm. So maybe we can call this spiritual ashram. Eh? This is our zone, you see? Spiritual zone. And the city is a capital zone for different kind of people. Mm. Capital people. Uh, city people, yeah, and a farm, sometimes a very big field with different farmers, they live together, a farming zone. There are ghost zones. Don't ever go there. Okay. Ghost zones are mostly in some very remote area, and uh, people don't live there, because ghosts, they are also afraid of people, the virtuous, upright, moral, fit people. So they are not allowed to go near these people. At least their energy will harm them. Not allowed to. The gods, the angel, will not allow them. 
Sometimes they slip through, or they don't go there, but they can send their energy. If they're powerful, they can send energy to different places sometimes to harm people. But mostly, ghosts have the ghost zone. Hmm? Okay? But ghosts is like also human beings. They do illegal stuff sometimes. <laughs> they go illegally to some human zone and get caught, you know, and send back to hell or wherever they belong. Hmm. Ghosts also have laws, yeah? Also have ghost police, <laughs> ghost court, <laughs> ghost supreme court. <laughs> I started throwing food out my kitchen window for the ghosts, like an offering of food out my kitchen window, and now the birds don't come to the bird feeder. And I kind of think this offering for the goats. And, and now then the bird I have came? No birds in my bird feeder. I don't know if it's from the ghosts or. Oh, it could be, could be. Yeah, the ghost can also manifest it as birds or possess the body of the bird, just as some of them can possess some human body to enjoy that. Okay, you do what you do. Okay, you just intend it for the ghost and then whatever happened, happened. <laughs> I, I use a plate, you know, a clean plate that I use it myself. I use it and put different food. If I have it, if I don't have, I use some other thing so that all the food contained on it and clean. Yeah. It's very bad already. It's suffering already to be a ghost, so hungry ghost. Yeah, very suffering. So I don't discriminate. I give them. Mm. And there is a mantra: you can multiply it. It's very old, ancient in Sanskrit. But uh, if you have power or not, <laughs> it's not about talking or repeating a mantra. It has to have power. Maybe listening for me, you might have. Don't abuse it. Yeah. Recite the five names, also okay. You see, in your heart say you want to offer to the ghost, and may other don't interfere. Let them enjoy. Mm? I want to ask Master that if we give money in charity, can we ask the benefit go for the ghost and demons or no? The benefit go to the ghost? Yeah. Uh, can do. Can do. Of course. You give in their name. Can do. If you know the ghost. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> People do that all the time. Like somebody die, and then they take their clothes, their possession, and give it to outside people in their name for their benefit. You can do it for the ghost. You can wish. No harm, okay? <laughs> Even if you don't know the ghost, you may wish for your surrounding ghost their benefit, okay? Even if it doesn't benefit, at least they feel comforted and they feel grateful that you think of them. I cannot guarantee if they benefit or not, but at least you have good heart, okay? Good for you. Hmm? <laughs> when I was uh, younger, I was still married. I recited the sutra every day in Germany, yeah? And the weather in winter is very cold, you know? There's snow outside. But I open a window. I sit in the room. I open a window. I wish the ghost to hear it. I wish other living beings invisible to hear it, and all the animals around to hear it. So that may be the benefit. <laughs> because there are other living beings around, you know, invisible and visible. Also the animals around in the yard or hiding, they can hear the the good words from the Buddha, and maybe they get benefit. That's what I was thinking. And it was cold. <laughs> yeah. I cover myself. It's still cold. You know, in Europe, it can be very cold in winter. Mm. Mm, I was young. <laughs> I was just thinking like that. And I asked my Buddhist teacher if it's okay or not to do that, whether they benefit or not. They say, sure, they benefit. Anyone who hears Buddha teachings benefit. At least it's positive words. Remind them to be positive, to have hope, and to pray. Of course, benefit. So I recite very loud, even though in German at night you shouldn't make loud noise. <laughs> My neighbors were very benevolent. They didn't say anything. Not only noise, but I beat the fist. Kong, 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 and bang. Kong, 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 bang. <laughs> Because you recite the, the sutra, you read, and you uh, accompany. 
so that you don't sleep. <laughs> it's not for the Buddha to hear anybody. It's for you to not sleep. It's so like, when one is permeated with hearing one's every... And now and then you have bong also, the, the gong, yeah? And now I understand why. So that you don't sleep. <laughs> and uh, normally, other normal neighbors, they would complain, you understand? But they did not, because they open windows. That means upstairs or surrounding neighbor, they will hear it. <laughs> they didn't complain. Oh, they are good people, educated. Lawyers, doctors, engineers, they all live in the same block, because they are expensive area, a residential, and very exclusive, eh? with big garden, sauna, swimming, <laughs> swimming pool, with the wave, artificial wave. So it's not for normal people who can afford it. I live on the ground floor even, <laughs> so all the upstairs people benefit from my gong, gong, gong. <laughs> and I do it late at night also, you know, I didn't say nothing. <laughs> now I think about it, it's not considerate of me, you know. They didn't say nothing, probably they just shut the window, stuff their ears. <laughs> go sleep, work too hard all night, don't hear nothing. Or maybe my, my voice is so, can I say, re huh? Not soothing, but sleep-inducing, you know? <laughs> and after a while, I think just like a lullaby, you know? I just sleep. Because you don't just read, you, you read like singing, yeah? Your voice is beautiful, man. Hmm? Oh, thank you. Your thank voice you. is beautiful. Thank you, thank you. For you, I am all beautiful, all of you. <laughs> In Vietnam, we say the mother sing and all the children clap. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> you are the, the fans. <laughs> That's why. No, in, when you read the sutra or mantra in Buddhism or the liturgy and all that, you sing, you know, like singing. Like I sing some tape in Buddhist chanting. I don't just read it. You sing, you see sing sometime accompany with a music instrument or just the gong and the what? They carve from wood, you know? And you have a wood stick with a cover with some soft uh, rubber. But then you make cock cock with loud noise. And another small bell, another hand. Now and then you punctuate. <laughs> but the wooden fish always with you, every word. <laughs> Very loud. They make an empty hollow inside. So when you, you hit it, it's very loud. Are you all right still? You continue wanting? Today is the last day. <laughs> I don't think we can make it. But never mind. Next time, huh? I thought I don't want to appear anymore in the public. And then I say next time again. I already asked for calendar next. <laughs> what is the next uh, holidays? Mostly, only in Taiwan they have long holiday, you know. Christmas, only one day holiday, you know. It depends. If it's four on weekend, then maybe we have three. But most Christmas, only one day. Actually, it was thought for Taiwanese only because they have four days, continuous holiday. Children day, and then there's tomb, sweeping day, and then Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> so they have four days off. That's why we have the three days retreat. Because I'm in Taiwan, I only think of Taiwanese people. I don't know if you come or not. I don't know if you have holiday. Not that I didn't think of you, but if you can come, you can. If you cannot, because your holidays are different. Why are you laughing? I'm just thinking this is so funny. Because we all like that, we want to come all the time, but all the countries are so different. Yeah, I know, I know. That's why sometimes I see this chocolate, the other day I see the snowflake. It's all different all the time. <laughs> but never mind, that's, that's okay, you can take turn to come. Well, thank God you do, otherwise I don't have enough land to accommodate you. <laughs> I told you I'm glad that the world has jobs for them. They have jobs to do, and they have mortgage and they have children, they have wives, they have kids, except, except him, he just go anyway. <laughs> they have car insurance to pay, all kind of things to do. Yeah, they have garden to mourn, otherwise the wife will 
We will scold them, no, don't mow the grass. Even sometimes the police will give you penalty if you don't mow your grass. Yeah, regulation, yeah. In some communities like that, all the garden has to be clipped, clipped, clipped. There's a true story. There's one old lady, she couldn't do it. So her grass go very tall. After repeat warning, the police put her in jail. <laughs> yes. And all the, the neighbor youth suddenly feel sorry for her. They all come and help her to mow the grass. And later on, she's free. Anyway, for, from then on, they come and, and help her to cut the grass. That's very good. It could be just a violation, not a, not something that put you in jail. Yeah, it but they did put her in jail. They did put her in jail in America, in one one area. So the media printed that because it's something uh, happy ending, you know. <laughs> she couldn't pay the penalty also. She couldn't hire somebody to do it. She's a pensioner, small pensioner, have no money, you know, old, yeah. And if eating meat a lot, then have to pay more for medicine, doctor bill, and all that. One thing leads to another. Yeah. So she has to go to jail. <laughs> and all the people feel sorry for her from now on, help her to cut grass on time, mm. like everybody else. Yes. I used to live, one time I lived in Belgium, huh? And near the sea, there's a big community of mobile home, trailer park. I live in one of the trailers. I rent it. <laughs> rented. But still, they say you must cut the grass. The manager come now and then and check if you cut the grass or not. If not, you're not allowed to stay. Huh? You'll be out, huh? <laughs> and the neighbor, they're checking you also. They're checking each other. <laughs> if don't cut grass, they report. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, gosh. <laughs> this war not easy, yeah? <laughs> 